There's no denying that Fortnite has been in a bit of a slump lately. Who can agree with that? We're not saying that the game is dying or anything like that. We're not going to have a funeral for it. You don't have to bring flowers and cry, oh, Fortnite, don't leave me. Okay, it's still pretty far from dead. In fact, it's still the most dominant battle royale game on the market. Who knew that? That's just facts. But based on various bits of available data, there's definitely been a decline in players over the last few seasons, and Season X saw a pretty sharp decline. The most we've seen so far. So what exactly does that mean for the future of Fortnite? Will it ever go back to its glory days? What's going on, guys? This is your guy. That's right, your friend. Say it with me, the one and only Keith Allen. And I want to let you know right now that I am your number one fan. Doesn't mean that I'm going to sub to everybody. Doesn't mean I'm going to follow you. That, that's not what I mean by number one fan. What that means is that I'm rooting for you. I'm cheering for you that you're going to be successful, not only playing this game that you love, but also in life. Make sure to follow me on my Instagram as soon as you can. I want to help inspire you guys to overcome all the obstacles that are in your life and be the best person that you can be. So today we're going to be discussing whether season 11 can save Fortnite. I could just see Fortnite screaming right now. Oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Season 11, you got to save me. And season 11 is like, wait a minute, do I look like season X to you? I got you, don't worry. Despite all the bad news, Epic has been making some fantastic changes that we think are heading in the right direction. And we think those changes just might revitalize the game and the upcoming season. Before we get into all of that, I want to ask you this question. Raise your hand if you want to get better at Fortnite. Look at all those hands. Wow, everywhere. So I want you to click the link below to go to ProGuys.com as soon as you can, where you can play with the best players in the world by just clicking a button. Where was this when I was a kid? Sign up for our membership at ProGuys and you're going to get a ton of incredible content from the best players like Benji and Mongro. My goodness. So if you want to compete in Fortnite, you have to check out ProGuys.com. You got to do it. Also, be sure to drop a like on this video to show your support and love. We strive to bring you guys the best content available. You already know that. All right, with that being said, sit back, time to relax, and get my favorite candy, that bunch of crunch, and let's get this going. Starting off, what actually went wrong in the first place? Dun, dun, dun. There was always signs that Epic was steering the design of their game to cater specifically to the casual player experience. I say the first major change was with the planes in Season 7. While they were definitely fun to use, I personally love to use them, I'm guilty of that, especially in Air Royale, they didn't even really belong in any of the core game modes. They were just so destructive and they threw a big wrench in the way people were used to playing. Seriously, being able to just ram a flying vehicle into structures and insta-kill players, I mean, how was that balance? Well, they weren't. The intention behind making them that overpowered was to help newer and lesser skilled players get kills and win games they otherwise wouldn't be able to do so. Keeping it real. The same thing pretty much happened with the Brutes, but to a much harsher extent. I'm sure most of you guys can recall from recent memory just how overpowered these things were. It took Epic a few weeks, but they did eventually realize their mistake and they nerfed the Brute. Bravo, bravo. And now they're completely disabled. Awesome. Probably because hardly anyone liked them. Uh, did you? Oh, you like them? Okay, you, you're like one person out of like a million, okay? I don't even know. I, I, I really don't. How do you guys feel about the Brutes? In actuality, choosing to make things overpowered to help lesser skilled players led to a ton of problems. Like, what about the competitive scene? The competitive players like, <laughs> they're looking around like, what, what, what's going on? There are no new players in there. Yet the overpowered planes, the mechs, and whatever else were still enabled played a huge role throughout the entire season. As for helping out lesser skilled players, which we love you guys, we really, really do. It might have given them an opportunity to pick up more kills or even win a game now and then, but it definitely did not make them better at the game. Their core mechanics like building and aiming stayed very poor and they never improved. So outside of using a plane or mech or whatever crutch item there was at the time, they would still eventually get stumped and feel dissatisfied with the game. Now, 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 it's not a bad idea to cater to casuals or anything like that. Casual players, I love you, I really do. Don't kill the messenger. Casual and new players matter just as much as the hardcore fan base when it comes to the life of a game. Epic even mentioned their mission was to bring all players of all skill levels together to have a fun experience where anyone can win. I'm sure they sound just like that. But clearly, if you're pissing off a large portion of your player base trying to accomplish that, nothing good is going to come out of it. Trust me. There was also never a game mode or an environment meant for newer players to thrive in. Sure, we've got Team Rumble, we got Creative, and we got other LTMs, but those are not the core Battle Royale modes that people download the game for, and they can pretty much get stale and uninteresting after a while. Boring! Yeah, seriously. If you did want to play Battle Royale outside of a ranked environment, you would just be thrown in a pot of players with varying skill levels. 
Imagine for a second, for whatever reason, you only first started playing Fortnite in Season X, okay? You get into a solo match, everything is cool, and while you're trying to figure out the controls and get used to the game, somebody that's been playing since Season 3 with over 100 hours of practicing and creative rolls up on you. So, you give it your best shot, you see what's gonna happen, you have a little faith. But as you pretty much expect, they destroy you within seconds. Given that scenario as a new player, would you have that drive to keep playing hundreds or possibly even thousands of games just to try to improve to get a solo win? Probably not. You'd probably quit just like many people I know. If this just kept happening to you game after game after game, what would you do? Well, most casual players definitely would not continue to play. And so with players getting better and the skill ceiling growing, an avenue for newer players to experience Battle Royale in a fair manner was just not happening. Of course, both of those theories of why the game declined in popularity might not have everything to do with it. I mean, people do just get bored, right? Of things, eventually. It's just human nature. I can only watch one inning of a baseball game, and if I watch any further, I'm like, someone slap me. Please, put me on my misery. You see, the same things happen with all of us and other things. You see the same declines in popularity with TV shows, toy products, musicians, and plenty of other games. However, looking back at the backlash we saw with the mechs and Season X in general, I mean, let's be real, the sharp decline in popularity was not a coincidence. With a lot of the changes that we're starting to see lately, it seems that Epic is now realizing their fault and is starting to make some amends. One of the biggest changes, in our opinion, is skill-based matchmaking. Even though many are complaining about how it's been implemented, we don't really know how it works. The theory is that it's based on our kills per match and win rate, which would make a lot of sense. But the problem with that is, for instance, a 3.5 KD player on mobile is much different from a 3.5 KD player on PC. Previously, those devices wouldn't be matched together at all, but now they are. And if that's how it's going to work, going off of our previous stats, there are definitely going to be some imbalanced matches for me. Again, we don't know exactly how skill-based matchmaking works yet, so it may end up being a bit more complicated than just our KDs. We're not saying it's perfect by any means just yet, but Epic's goal here is to create even matches. So I think that by the time Season 11 starts, we're going to see some tweaks to improve that as well. Also, coming in Season 11 are bots, also known as AI or Computer Opponents. Now, they make up a small portion of lower skill lobbies, making it easier for newer players to learn the game without feeling so overwhelmed. People are treating this like it's going to be a bad thing, but so what if new players can have an AI to kill now? You know what I mean? Plenty of games have verse AI modes, which is great, because playing against them is a fantastic way to learn the basics. Players can now spend more time learning the game rather than just dreading a loss every single time they play. Overall, this is a pretty minor change, but it should help out newer players a bunch. A couple of new modes geared towards newer players have also been leaked. One is the tutorial mode, which at Fire Monkey on Twitter did an absolutely fantastic job of breaking it down. Designed specifically for new players, this mode will take them through the basics in a safe and friendly environment. Oh, that's just so nice. It'll teach them how to do things like open chests, build structures, and use weapons. This game's needed an in-depth tutorial for a long time now, so it's about time. The second one we've already talked about in a previous video, also leaked by Fire Monkey, this potentially upcoming mode would give newer players a better opportunity to win matches. So check this out. The top five players all get a victory royale, and the option to continue playing for first will be presented to the winners. Since this was leaked in the Chinese patch notes, we're not for sure this is coming to Fortnite that we all know and play. Sometimes games can differ in China, so this might just end up being a mode exclusively for their region. We're not sure just yet. But if anything, Epic can use this as a baseline for creating a similar mode the rest of the world can enjoy. So don't even think about moving to China just to get you a win. Don't even think about that. You're probably thinking, the top five is not even good enough for me. I need the top ten. See, now you're going a little bit too far. Now this is getting ridiculous. You're being silly now. You, need, you just need to practice, okay? Give it up. Even though we're probably never going to see Fortnite reach its peak probably ever again, it's definitely not too late to see a comeback from this decline. I mean, Tom Brady did it. You know what? Tom Brady has no, he hasn't. He keeps winning Super Bowls every year and the guy's like 80 years old. I just don't understand. So anyways, the proposed changes should, at least in theory, help fix the problems that were causing players to leave. With proper skill-based matchmaking, AI for the newbies to kill, and training modes to help them learn the basics, Epic now won't have to cater to casuals by adding ridiculous changes that impact the willingness to play for the rest of us. That means hopefully no more Brutes, no more Planes, Infinity Blades, you gotta be kidding me, really? Come on, I don't, I don't even wanna comment on that. Or whatever else that's just grossly overpowered. If you can tell, I need a Snickers right now, I do. 
There are even more ways they can go about this. Separating competitive from casual play is just one thing. Epic has always tried maintaining a similarity between competitive and core modes, but the fact of the matter is this. Competitive play is just much more different from casual play. Who, who agrees with me? Thank you. I have one person. Or right, two, three, four, five. Okay, okay, keep going. A new item, vehicle, or a rule set that might just work in a casual environment isn't guaranteed to work in a competitive environment, and vice versa. The competitive community seems to get angry at every bad change. And with how influential the top streamers and content creators can be, any sort of negative opinion just trickles down to their whole fan base. Separating casual and competitive play is going to become less of an issue now that skill-based matchmaking is affecting all core modes. But it's something that we think Epic should still consider each time they release something new. And on a side note, Epic really needs to consider giving the entire community the quality of life changes we've been asking for. Things like an FOV slider for a better field of view, or an option to disable pre-edits even. You guys may be thinking, alright, that's just like really minor, but you know what? At least it would show us that they care, or they could just send us a card and just say, you know, we're thinking about you, we love you. I'm sorry, I think I've been watching way too many romantic comedies or movies and shows. I, I don't know what just came over me. This is awkward. I want to run. Let's just forget I said that. Just let's, let's just move on. All right, anyways. Or the sound improvements they've been going to make since season eight. When is that coming? We all know how bad the audio is for crying out loud. Performance during Season X was at an all-time low, it seemed. But those of us that played on consoles, oh my goodness, especially Nintendo Switch players, the struggle was real. Nintendo Switch players, I feel your pain. Epic's never really been about slowing down the pace they release content, but personally, I don't think spending a couple of weeks to work on quality of life changes would be all that detrimental to the game. Our last glimmer of hope is the possibility of seeing a brand new map arrive in Season 11. There have been a lot of leaks and rumors, as well as a bunch of other clues to indicate some sort of map change. A bunch of POI names were found in the game's data a while ago. These aren't in stone or anything like that. They could always be something that's just trying to throw us off. But when we also got the recent last stop, wallpaper as another clue that we may be departing to a new island. And recently, the event name titled The End was confirmed on the PlayStation Store, with the tagline is near, as in the end is near. So again, another clue that our time on the current map may be ending. Hooray! Throw a party. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really excited for the new map. Apex Legends recently added a new map for their third season, and it feels like a breath of fresh air. The changes in scenery and having new areas to explore made the game almost feel new again. If Fortnite decides to really go this route, oh my goodness, the feeling that we all experienced when we first started playing might just be restored to us after all. So, can Season 11 save Fortnite? What do you think? We're all hopeful that it will. All the leaked and proposed gameplay changes should definitely help newer and, you know, less skilled players start winning more games. That'll hopefully create a better experience and keep them to just play longer. And so, as a consequence, Epic won't have to cater to them using more destructive methods. That'll hopefully mean no more crazy powerful items and vehicles and other gameplay changes focused on shrinking the skill gap. Also, the possibility of a new map, yes sir, could be the change needed to bring new new life to the game, just enough to bring players back. Come on home, come on. Whether or not that's coming, we'll just have to wait and see. All right, guys, once again, this is your guy. That's right, come on, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I want you guys to do some things this year that you've never done before. You know, face your fears. This is the time where you gotta face your fears. I want you to step out of your comfort zones and do things that you've never done before. Make sure to follow me on my Instagram. I wanna inspire you guys to be great. And uh, if you enjoyed this video and you're now hopeful that season 11 can save the game, hey, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and share the video with your friends. If you think there's another change Epic needs to make to ensure season 11 success, let us know why in the comments. We love to hear it. We'll see you guys soon.